So, back in 2010, in fact, not long after Labour lost power, a boy band called The Wanted really hit the big time. The debut single went straight in at number one. But behind the scenes, singer Max George was secretly battling depression, which would impact his life for more than a decade. And Max is here with us now. Now, Max, before Morning. we start, happy Mental Health Awareness Week. Thank you, First you off. Uh, I think we should start by clearing the air a bit, OK? Oh, yeah. Uh, June the 9th, something? 2011, Soccer 6 at the beloved home of my wonderful football club, Burnley Football Club, Turf Moor, and there was a charity match. And I was the captain of the Burnley supporters team and we were up against the wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and... Did it all turn nasty? No, Alyssa was late with a few tackles. <laughs> right. Yeah. What? Not on you. Was no, he, not on me. Was he tackling the man, not the ball? A, a little bit, yeah. Right. And it, yeah, it kicked off a little bit. And, and there's, uh, the ta there's one of the tackles with Tom Parker. You've had a whole clan playing with you. There's my son Rory coming in. There's my son Rory coming in. There's my son Callum in the background saying, ref, ref. Yeah, we had no chance. Uh, and there's son Rory getting in with Tom. And there's me looking a bit, well, what they started now. Furious. And there's Max coming in to sort it out. There we go. Sophie. Anyway, I'm going to admit, I did the first bad tackle. Did you? Okay. And I should have got right, a yellow Tom, card. There you go, mate. I should have got a yellow card. And, and by the way, if you're speaking to Tom, tell him I really hope he's doing OK. In the Thank you, yeah. He's, I know he's, he's, not doing, doing well. he's doing really well. Well, yeah, let's just... I, I know you do talk to Tom a lot. Um, uh, this is your bandmate, uh, bandmate of course, uh, Tom Parker. He was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour. Mm -hmm. Uh, huge, obviously, overwhelming support for him. How is he getting on? Yeah, great. Like, spoke to him, um, spoke to him a couple of days ago. He's, he's doing, he couldn't be doing better, honestly. Like, he, he FaceTimed me last week and he was just sat in the garden having a beer, mm. with the, uh, sat in the sun when it was sunny. Um, and yeah, honestly, his, his spirits are really high and uh, he's just looking forward to keep doing music and, you know, he's just, he's just Tom. Can you tell uh, us about your mental health struggles? Well, yeah, I mean, the struggles for me um, began... I, don't, I can't say exactly when, but I think when, when The Wanted first sort of took off, that's when I started noticing um, changes. It was more physical at the start. Mm. Um, started, with, started with what I thought was getting, like, rashes and then what looked like, like acne on my back and my chest. I'd never had that before, and it, it was weird to get it at the age that I was at. So I was having treatment for that, and then, um, and, and then I started to feel that I wasn't enjoying the stuff that I loved the most. So mm. it was a weird position to be in because at this, I'd, I'd just started to achieve everything I'd ever wanted. And being on stage in front of like thousands of people, I was like, that was the best feeling I'd ever had. But then at the same time, it was sort of felt like that that was what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. It's, so. it's a really interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Because we hear it from people who are on stage in front of thousands of adoring fans chanting your name. And then there's that sort of image of you then perhaps going into a hotel room, closing the door, mm -hmm. being on your own, and trying to find a kind of equilibrium between the two. Because yeah. many people would think, hang on a moment, huge fame, mm. adoration, validation, all of that love, where, what's the problem? That's, that's but... how I felt. That's what I was asking myself, because I, I, almost, I almost felt like it can't, be, it can't be to do with me feeling down or depressed or my mental health, because that, to me at the time, I was just like, I, I felt ungrateful for that. So I was like, it can't be that. There must just be probably drinking too much and I'm just... You know, could you talk to your band? Down. Could you talk to the rest of the band about it, or was that no. something you just didn't raise? No, I didn't. No, I didn't raise it. I didn't raise it. Um, it. It was one of them. I probably just went out and drank and tried to forget about it, and then it got better for for a while. Actually, the, the first year of the wanted was kind of quite bad, and then after the wanted was probably the worst. After a, just after I'd finished finished Glee filming Glee, because I went straight into that after The Wanted. So I think I was kind of still on a high, mm. like, because I went from the intensity of The Wanted, um, and then I went straight into Glee, mm. and I loved that. And then when that ended, that's when it really, the physical aspect yeah. of it was, so was the, bad. So you had the issue with this massive surge of fame and trying to handle it, and also that kind of conflict in your head about, I should feel really grateful that I'm mm -hmm. doing so well, and, yeah, I just feel depressed or anxious. And then when The Wanted broke up, you couldn't leave the house. 
Mm. For that, months. Yeah, that that's when um, that's when the physical side got the worst because I woke up one morning and I felt like I felt like my jaw had locked up and. Mm. Uh, as soon as I like went to to get up, I, f I felt sick. So I always thought I had like some form of bug or something, and that went on for a week, and then kind of went on for a, a month, and it was like there's something. I thought mm -hmm. there's something seriously wrong. That's now. so interesting about your jaw because my depression, when it was when I first became conscious, I had a breakdown, and actually the first time I actually went to see somebody properly was after Fiona, my partner, her jaw locked with the stress oh. of. Of dealing with me so these physical symptoms of what goes on inside i mean that's we overlook them at our peril well it's really good that you're talking about them because people watching will then start to think about perhaps the way that their mental health is manifesting mm. itself as well because as you say it's not necessarily always the obvious symptoms did you no. then find the courage to go and talk to somebody yeah i well actually back in at the start, I did actually go and talk to somebody, um, a lady called Eileen Bradbury, and for short term, like I just talking to her made me feel like I bounced out of there, mm. like, and I felt so good for that. Helped me for for about four years, to be honest. That one conversation, really? yeah, it really did. And um, she didn't medicate you. you, you no, she medicate didn't medicate me. No, I was I was medicated when I was in America. Mm. Um, but I actually took myself off medication because I didn't want to become dependent on it. Because what 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 I was freaking out about was like, if I keep taking these pills for, they were supposed to be for like eighteen months. Mm, when I'm into my sixth year now, right? And I, I worried about how I because it's like if if I if I feel something and I like something, mm. it's like why would I stop? And I, and I didn't want to get to a point where I just keep doing it and. So I took myself off them and the physical stuff, it, that just took time. And I think, again, even though doctors had told me in America and told me what it was and I kind of knew, I still, just the stubbornness of thing in me was like, uh, it's not that, it's got to be something else. And it, it was. And then one morning, um, I was just at my dad's house and I woke up and I was like, I feel all right today. And then... And then I've been, I've been fine, like absolutely fine since and spoken about it accidentally, to be honest, because publicly it's never been something that I thought I'd talk yeah. about. You did a podcast, didn't you, with Jamie yeah. Lang? And it sort of came out. It did. It just came out and... Um, but you feel better now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about it. Yeah. Do you know what? Like, even, even talking about it now, I'm not mm. going to lie, like, it makes me feel a, bit, a little bit uncomfortable and mm. nervous because it's just not something that I thought I'd do. But what I will say is, in terms of me talking, does help me, and it has done since day one. Um, but the biggest thing for me about talking about it was the response that yeah, I get yeah, from yeah. other people, especially... I must have had over 100 people message me saying, since you did that podcast with Jamie, I've spoke to my mum about it, mm. and I didn't think I could talk to anyone. So, yeah. you know, for me feeling a bit uncomfortable about it, it's, it's you, worth it. You also, you also said this thing about Stacey and how she deals with it, and you said to her, just be normal with me. Yeah. And I think, I think that's so important as well, is about how partners and families deal with somebody when they're depressed. They find it really, really hard. Mm. And I, that's the thing we've struggled with for the longest, and we, but it's only by being open that we can get to a better place. Yeah, like with, with Stace, like now, um, at the start, obviously, if, if I had like a little bit of a bit of a blip, it was because it was new. She didn't really know like what to do. But now we kind of because it's normal, and and that's the thing with, I think with having um, like mental illness and stuff. It is so normal, and so many people have it, and you don't need to feel isolated with it. Mm. And I try to like be as open with it with stay. So she'll just come up to me and be like, "Are you having are you having a bit of a wobble?" And I'll be like, "Yeah," and she says, "All right," and then she we just leave it because I know it'll go. And she knows it'll go. If we just act normally, it'll, it, it does go because I can talk about it now. It's so good that you're talking openly about it because, you know, you, what you say will have an impact for other people. And there will be people who might feel it's too difficult to share with a partner, it's too difficult to share, or that they think that they might not be able to get help. And the fact that you are speaking so openly about it is, is really, really helpful. Well, thank you. And give my best to Tom. I will do. Max, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Thank you.